Hey everyone, I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you are new here, my name is Melissa and I am a second grade teacher in Michigan. So I am back in my classroom today. I have been back a few times since I last showed you guys some of my setup stuff, but honestly, I've been starting to feel very overwhelmed with all of the back to school stuff and all of the new procedures and just figuring everything out. So I've kind of been doing a lot of techie stuff and other prep stuff, but today I'm gonna do a little more like of the fun setup. So I thought I would show you guys what I am up to today. I probably won't be here too, too much longer, so this will probably be combined with some stuff that I'm doing tomorrow, so just know you'll probably see me on a couple of different days. So I've been here for a while and I just actually made some copies and now I'm going to put together my back to school flip books. Now normally I give these out at my open house, but this year we are doing a virtual open house where we are just going to have a Google Meet that parents can pop in and out and ask questions. So I'm actually sending this flip book home on the first day of school. So this is the flip book I'm using this year. This is the third year in a row that I am going to use it. I've really liked it so far. I feel like it is very easy for parents to flip through and find exactly what they are looking for, answer any questions they might have. So I'll just kind of walk you through it really quick. At the top, it has just a welcome to second grade. I'm not gonna show you this page because it is my contact information with my school name, but I also put some information about Class Dojo on there and ask the parents to connect to that. On the behavior page, I just go through and write about our class expectations um, and our school policies and just kind of like how behavior works in our room. So I talk about class dojo and I talk about star tickets because those are the two things that I use. And then we have our daily schedule outlined, then grading and homework. So I talk about how like homework is basically graded on completion and how it shouldn't be something that the child is spending hours and hours on. And how my policy is that if they don't understand something, they should circle it, make a note, try their best, and then they can talk to me about it and we can look over it together. And then finally at the end is just a teacher note. So it's just like a little letter welcoming them to second grade and to our classroom. I did get this on Teachers Pay Teachers, so I will link the resource in the down bar if you are interested in picking up um, the digital file. finished and I am so happy with how they turned out. Seriously you guys this resource is so good because I really only end up editing like the daily schedule and the teacher note every year like for the most part and then other things can obviously change but they pretty much stay the same um, so it's really really nice to do from year to year because it's pretty much ready to go and then with the scrap paper I like to just cut them up into little um, pieces about this size and then I use them for student bookmarks so it's a win-win. So now I have been working on my math toolkits, which if you guys didn't see my last video of my first couple days of classroom setup, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. So check that out if you haven't already. But I have almost all of them done, so I thought I would show you guys what I ended up putting in there. So last week I just added the base 10 blocks. I did 200 blocks, a bundle of 10 10 sticks, and then 10 ones. But I added a few more things. So in my toolkit, I numbered an Expo marker for the students and I put one of the little face washing pads from Dollar Tree in here. So that way when we use our whiteboards, which we use them all the time for math, they have their own marker and their own eraser ready to go in their toolkit. Then I have just a little baggy, minor Toy Story themed of course, and then there are 20 little rainbow counters in there. So that's for like when we play a board game or something like that, they have individual counters they can use and just put them back in their bag that is numbered. I also have two large foam dice in there for, again, playing a game. I love these big foam ones. They're so nice and they're not noisy like normal dice. So if you're a person who has a pet peeve of like dice rolling everywhere, which isn't really a problem for me, but I know for some people it is, these are good and these don't get lost. So these are on Amazon. I will put them in my storefront in case you are interested, just in case you're in the market for some new toys. 
Um, and then I also put a nine sided dice or 10 sided dice in there. Yeah, because it has zero through nine. So when we get into a little bit bigger numbers, these can be helpful. Um, just different games require different things. So those are in there as well. So that's what I have in there for right now. And it all fits like super nicely. Um, I've just been tucking it in there like that. And then I just pop the lid on and it's good to go. I think I am either going to make a label to put on the front or some vinyl so I will keep you guys posted on what I decide but that is my math toolkit and as we kind of go on through the year I probably will also be adding like some flashcards in there um, we use math expressions at my school so we have make a 10 cards and secret code cards and stuff like that um, and those will probably go in there too Saturday and it is August 29th so time has flown by um, our teacher workday is on Monday and then school starts on Tuesday so I'm feeling very overwhelmed right now because I have a lot to do in my classroom still a lot to set up and I also am taking my next grad class right now so I have an assignment and they're always due on Sundays and I just am like ah there's so much to do and so little time so I made a to-do list over there and I'm hoping to get started I'm gonna start doing a little bit of printing and making some copies and stuff so then I can get to work a positive is that it is finally under 80 degrees so it's not so hot in here today it's still hot I'm still probably gonna sweat but I have my fan like right here blowing right at me while I work on my computer and the windows are open so at least I won't be sweating so bad <laughs> So update, I made these little pocket labels for my math toolkits, and I just put them in some of the adhesive pockets from Target. I love how they turned out. I think it looks really good. So I'm actually gonna put these labels in my TPT store as a freebie. I will number them one through 30, but I will just include some that say math toolkit as well. So that way, if you don't wanna use class numbers, you could just download them and use them with just math toolkit on them. And I actually made, reading ones too. So I will put those in the freebie as well. Same thing with the numbers and then some without. I'm about to put together a reading toolkit also. I think I might get to that today. And so if I do, I'll show you guys what I'm gonna put in there. They are done, finally. I think they turned out so good. I'm really happy with them and I think they will be so good to keep the supplies as clean as possible this year. So I'm gonna start my reading toolkits now and I'm actually gonna put them in these reusable Ziplocs from Dollar Tree. But here's the thing, you guys. This says easy peel off label and they are not. So it's gonna take me a long time to literally just peel the stickers off. So that's probably what I'm gonna be doing for the next like 20 minutes. Seriously, it's been about 20 minutes and I finally got them all off. There's like some goo that's stuck on the corner of them, but I am gonna put an adhesive label pocket. So I think I'm just gonna put it over the goo that's already there because then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> can just cover it up. But these are all of the things that I'm going to start putting in the toolkit. So like I said, they're gonna be in one of these reusable Ziplocs from Dollar Tree. They're going to have an adhesive label with the little reading toolkit just because honestly it makes it cuter and that way it has a student number so we don't get them confused. I'm going to put in a fluency phone which normally I have our class share but this year I obviously don't want them to. <laughs> um, then I have one of these little trackers from Target. And then I'm going to put in a bookmark. Um, these are printed on cardstock and then the kids can color them in. And I might even laminate them after they color them. We'll see. But these were made by Mikkel, who is Letters from Forth on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers. And they are so cute. So I will make sure to link those below as well.
those are all done for now. Again, if you'd like the labels, they will be linked below, but I'm not sure how well these will last because honestly, as I was doing one of these, like I broke the little zipper on one of them. So I don't know. I might have to switch them to like normal gallon size baggies, but I thought these were really cute. So I hope that they hold up at least a little bit. And honestly, if they don't close, it's not like the end of the world because it'll still hold stuff in there. So I'm thinking I'm going to store these in their book box for now, but I'm really not sure. I don't know. So anyways, I'll probably end up putting some more in there once we get started. Like, I think these would be really good for like putting fluency passages and we have like little decodable readers that we pass out that are made out of paper. So I feel like that could be good to put in there. I also might put a highlighter at some point because when we read those little paper decodables, we do a lot of highlighting but I might have them put their highlighter in their normal like pencil box. So I'm not really sure yet. I feel like there's a lot of trial and error that's gonna happen this year with supplies being one of them. But for now, I am content with my cute little reading toolkit. So here are what the book boxes look like with the reading toolkit inside. So there's gonna be a lot more in these boxes, but for now, I just tucked them in there. Like I said, I'm not sure that they will stay, but I like it for now. So I've been seeing a ton of different teachers doing affirmation stations this year, which is where you put positive self-talk um, notes up around your classroom, usually around a mirror, so that kids can look in the mirror and say positive things about themselves because a lot of times, you know, our kids have very negative self-talk and negative feelings and like that's so sad, especially when they're so young. So I think that was a really cool idea to have it just around a mirror. And so I hung up my mirror and now I'm going to put on my labels. So I'll show you what they look like. So I made like some kind of tie-dye rainbow labels and they just have all different kinds of affirmations and positive self-talk. So I actually made a file with eight different pages of these that all say something different. I printed out four for now to start. Like I'm talking about teachers pay teachers a lot lately, but I figure, you know, I am making this stuff anyways so I might as well upload it so that it's available to you guys too so I will probably put these on there for probably like two dollars for all eight of the pages and there are six cards on each page and they all say something different and then of course there is one that says Mrs. Skoltons loves me I'm gonna change that to be my teacher loves me so that way you know it can be used for you because it would be a little strange if you had Mrs. Skoltons loves me in your classroom but anyways those will be on teachers pay teachers again link to my store is gonna be below so now I'm going to hang them and cut them out and then I will show you guys what my mirror ends up looking like. I feel like literally every like classroom setup video I made has me sitting at my paper cutter or my laminator. But you guys know if you're a teacher, like this is the real deal. This is what we do. So this is real life. <laughs> for now I did run out at the bottom so I do have to print one more but I really like it I feel like this is going to be so fun and just such a positive place one other thing I did get accomplished was putting some new library labels on my new bucket so we can see Katie Wu and Pedro and friends um let's see I had to make a second Mo Willems because I have so many but the kids love it and then I did Splat the Cat, Moby Shinobi, and Molly Mac. So I took some of my harder books like Bad Guys and Rainbow Magic and Puppy Patrol and just like those books that are higher level because realistically a lot of my kids are not going to be starting with those at their appropriate level and I'm not saying they can't read them but I don't have any shelf space so those are being stored for now and then I can swap them out with some of the lower leveled books later. I sort my library by series so I just kind of gauge it by like the lower level series versus the higher level series. So I swapped some of those out and I'm happy with how my library looks and it is ready to go. Okay, so I'm at the point where I literally just need to start cleaning. So I'm just gonna start picking stuff up because I've been putting it off and trying to do all the projects, but I really need to clean because that's like the number one thing that needs to get done before the kids come, obviously. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so I cleaned off all the tables except this one because my secretary delivered our math books today and so I need to go through and label those. But I think I'm gonna do that on Monday. I think I might try to not come in tomorrow, you guys. I don't know. I really want to enjoy just like a relaxing day and I have my grad school stuff. So I think I'm gonna try not to come in on Sunday and then just come in on Monday because like I said, that's our teacher work day. So we have a lot of training and stuff like that, but we do get a little bit of time to like be in our rooms and do like video trainings or if we choose, we can use that time to like work on stuff in here and then do the video trainings on our own time. But if you can see, I have everything cleared off. Before I go though, I am going to get rid of some of these chairs. Um, we are keeping our tables this year at my school. Um, if you had tables, you're going to keep them, but our class sizes are way, way smaller. Like we had a ton of kids go virtual, so I'm not gonna need like half of these chairs in here. So then I can space kids out and then I will put the desk tags on on Monday. So I think that that is what I am going to do really quick before I go. I'm getting so hungry, it's almost six o'clock and I just really want some dinner because I never ate lunch today, so I'm very hungry. <laughs> and like this is sad but I feel like it's the best way I can fit everybody apart um, I don't really like that there's three chairs right here I need to figure out where to put this guy and I have a desk but like that's just gonna be really lonely I already have a half circle that's like by themselves which I know you know is the idea so I tried to spread all the other chairs out as far as I could um, these look a little close to me but the thing is if I put them here and here then like they're talking at each other and like exchanging like air and stuff like that like towards each other's faces so we're trying to put them in the same direction as much as possible so I tried to get almost everyone facing forward and then if they are not facing me they're facing inward but far enough away where their germs won't travel I would love to get another one of those and just make that table go like super long across the middle, but I don't know if I can do that because I have a little half trapezoid like as my little coffee table back here that I could totally use, but the problem is when we lower them like this, we have to take the legs off. And so whenever people wanna raise them, it's always like, where are the legs? I don't know, this is not really what I want for my layout, but I feel like it's the most safe but also will be good for learning so we're gonna go with it for now and then I moved the extra chairs into my back room in case I do get more students and then there are a couple here that I need to figure out to do with I can also just tuck them in the back room but yeah this is what we're working with all right you guys that is it for classroom setup for now like I said I'm coming in on Monday for sure um, and I don't really think that I'll probably like record what I'm doing just because it's the day before school, it's gonna be hectic and crazy. If I do, it'll probably have to be included with a different video because I guarantee that I am not going to be recording that much. So one more thing before I end this video, we're actually gonna flash back to a few days ago when you saw my other classroom setup because I have a little bit of a haul to show you. So I'm gonna quick include that at the end, but if you gotta go, you may go, but if you're interested in seeing what I um, received for my classroom, please keep watching. So I want to take a couple minutes and show you guys some things that people have purchased from my Amazon wish list for my classroom. I appreciate it so, 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 so much. Like words cannot describe how amazing it is that people who I don't even know want to support me and my students. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance if you donated any of these to my room. I haven't opened them yet, so I'm like going to be a little surprised what's inside. Um, there are a few things that I peeked in, but then I saved like three or four boxes to just open on camera so that way I could be surprised. So the first thing I want to talk about is this book that I received and it is called Be Bold, Be Brave and it is 11 Latinas Who Made U.S. History. 
Now this has a really funny story behind it because when I opened it up, there was a little like packing slip to tell me who it was from. And it was from someone named Logan. Now, one of my best friends since I was in like middle school is named Logan. So I just assumed that it was from her. So I texted her and said, thank you so much for the book. And she was like, what book? I didn't send you a book. And I was like, are you sure? So I sent her a picture of it and she's like, no, that's not from me. And so I don't know who it's from, but I, it's someone with the same name as one of my close friends. So there must be another Logan who chose to support my classroom. So Logan, thank you so, so much. I am so excited to read this to my students this year. Another thing I received from my classroom wish list. Let me open her up is an adorable little Olivia stuffed animal book buddy. This did not have a slip inside. However, my prediction is that it is possibly from the clear the list movement that has started on Instagram. I know that Courtney, who is in charge of the um, movement, has partnered with Amazon this year and has been clearing a ton of lists. And I think that I have received some items for that. So my guess is that this is where this came from, but I'm not positive. This could be from someone else. So whoever it is thank you so much I am obsessed with her she's so cute <laughs> so next I'm going to try and open this one hopefully you can't see my address I don't think you can <gasps> oh my goodness this is so awesome I got the eight pack of multicultural crayons so um, there's eight of like different skin tone colors and there are, I believe, yeah, there's 24 boxes of these. So that is super exciting. I cannot wait to let my students color with these. I feel like these are so important to have and I'm so excited to add these to my classroom. Again, there was no packing slip in with those, so I am, again, assuming that they are from the Clear the List movement, but just in case, thank you, thank you, thank you. If it is from somebody other than that or from the Clear the List movement, either way, thank you so much. Okay, this one feels... This one feels like a book of some sort, like a hardcover, so we'll see if I'm right. Okay, so this next one is definitely from the Clear the List Foundation, and it is the book Hair Love. I am so excited to have this one. It's been on my list for a while, so this will be a great addition to my classroom library. So thank you to the Clear the List Foundation. This is so awesome. So this one is in a slightly taller box, and I think it's maybe like a manipulative of some sort. I think I definitely had some STEM stuff on my list, so I think that's what this could be. I was wrong, you guys. <gasps> so, I got some washable watercolor paints. There are, I think, 12 sets. So these are so awesome. I'm so excited. I've never had watercolors in my classroom before, so I'm very, very excited to bring these in. I think they'll be so fun. And again, that one did not have a packing slip, but if you were the person who sent it in or the Clear the List movement, again, thank you so much. <laughs> This skinny one I'm pretty sure is a book of some sort. Does anyone else just like not cut packages sometimes and try to just open them with your hands? I got it. I always feel strong once I get it. Oh, yay, this is so awesome. I got the Little Leaders Exceptional Men in Black History. Again, another amazing one to add to my library. I already have the Little Dreamers set about the um, visionary women, so this one will be really nice to have as well. Again, no slip, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just gonna keep saying that after everyone. Okay, I've got one more to open up, and it feels like it's probably a book again, so we'll see. Oh my gosh. I feel like unboxing these things on camera was maybe like better in my brain than like the actual process, but. Oh yes, this is so cool. So I had never really heard of this before. Um, and then I think recently someone put it on Instagram and it is called What a Wonderful Word. So it's a collection of untranslatable words from around the world. So 
in different languages, I'm sure you guys know, there are some words that just don't directly translate. Like different languages have words for like a very specific feeling, for example. And so it's words that just like can't be translated. So I thought that that was really, really cool. Okay, so here's an example. So the word tartle is Scottish and it says to hesitate because you've forgotten someone's name. So it's not just to hesitate because you can't remember something, it's very specifically about a person's name. So in English, we don't have one word that sums that up. We just say, oh, I hesitated because I forgot their name. So it's really cool and I just feel like that is just very interesting and like, I don't know, I thought that was a very fun book. So again, no packing slip, but thank you so much. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you guys is my friend Logan, who I was talking about earlier, who didn't send me the book from my wish list. When I told her about it, she thought it was so, so, so funny. And so she decided to actually go and pick one up for me. And she didn't even know that this was on my wish list. She just saw it at a bookstore and thought like, that looks like a great book. I bet Melissa would like that for her classroom. And she was so right because it was on my wish list. And she got me Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History. So now I have both of these and I am so thankful and so excited. So thank you so much, Logan. These books are adorable and I really appreciate it. So yeah, sorry, like I said 20,000 times like that I don't know who they are from, but I just am so appreciative regardless of if they are from an organization or from some of you guys. That is so, so, so kind. So thank you so much if you have made a contribution to my classroom. Words cannot describe how much I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in shopping my Teachers Pay Teachers store, that is in the down bar. You can also follow me on Instagram. If you do not already, I am made for second grade, just like here. And then my Amazon storefront and classroom wish list and any other links that are relevant to this video will be in the down bar below. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.